Welcome to this class on the topic of employee involvement techniques. Now you'll notice from the bottom right hand corner of this slide that there are in fact 122 slides. So it's quite a long class. I strongly recommend you have breaks, stop the class, make some notes, have a rest, come back and, and complete it. Uh, remember to come back and complete it, that's the important part. Um, so let's, uh, let's start with uh, this session and see some of the techniques that are involved in employee involvement. Employee involvement techniques include a range of techniques and policies adopted by organisations in order to increase employee cooperation. So clearly involvement techniques are aimed at something and they're aimed at getting more cooperation from the employees. It's becoming increasingly important to include employees in decision making uh, and make them feel valued and part of the team. Get more involvement, get more participation, uh, more motivation as a consequence and higher productivity and a better working climate. So employee involvement is a management philosophy, a workplace culture where people have a degree of power over their jobs. The workers are trusted in their tasks. The workers can see what is involved in their tasks. They understand it probably more than anyone else in the organization. They do it on a day-to-day -day basis. So they can see opportunities for improvements they can see ways in which the work can be refined and improved. So it's important to have their involvement so that the management gain from that experience. Plus, of course, the workers will feel more engaged and more a part of the organisation and therefore have greater motivation and greater uh, involvement, greater productivity. So employee uh, involvement techniques aim to gain employee, employee commitment and cooperation. So the techniques are used to try and gain employee commitment and cooperation. Employees are, uh, are involved with the management. Management work with the employees. There's a, a high level of contact between them and it's good quality contact and this means that the employees have commitment and cooperation. They work alongside the organizations to improve performance. As I said earlier, they understand the tasks probably more than anyone else. They, they do the tasks on a regular basis, so they understand exactly what's required. They understand ways in which the, the tasks could be improved or modified, so their opinions are important. So they help the organisation to meet customer demands and changing needs. They understand when the customer wants a variation in the product or uh, when some innovation can be introduced into the product. In fact, they may be the ones who bring the suggestions to the management which will further enhance the position of the business in the marketplace. They can also help in attracting and recruiting and training a skilled workforce. Having the existing workforce engaged and motivated, then they may uh, be able to make comments and suggestions about recruitment, the types of uh, personnel that, are, that need to be engaged in the organisation, and the types of training that's needed to be put into place. If there's a good relationship between management and the workforce directly, there may be no need for trade unions. There may be no need for some intermediary. It may be that the, the workforce are quite happy and confident to work with the management because the management are, in a, sen in a sense, enlightened. The management work with the employees, see the employees as valuable and respect the employees for what they do. Linking rewards to company performance and profitability may be a way of getting more involvement from the employees. 
rewarding the employees for coming up with good ideas and good working practices and, and being cooperative. Um, facilitate continuous improvement and monitoring programs and processes. The, the employees can be involved continuously to make recommendations for better quality uh, better quality output, better quality processes. Uh, it, it's, it's continuous improvement. It's a policy of continuous improvement and a policy that's committed to quality. Employee involvement techniques differ from employee participation. Uh, employee involvement techniques are managed and encouraged by management. It is low level involvement and voluntary. So the employee involvement techniques are managed and encouraged by management but perhaps the employees are also trusted to move any changes forward to to try out new ideas and they're encouraged to to speak openly about their tasks and how the tasks can be managed and improved. Employee participation uh, is employee and representative involvement in decision making process. So employee participation is one where the employees help to make the decisions. Employee involvement are in a sense managed by the uh, the HR department or by, by general management perhaps by the accounts department or the marketing department or the production department depends on which area we're, we're discussing but in terms of involvement the management uh, channel the efforts of the workforce and listen to them and get more involvement and get get their agreement to changes and also uh, listen to the workforce about their proposals for change and see if they can be implemented. It's involvement. Employee participation may involve uh, broad decision making related to the business. Now Lewis and Thornhill uh, in 2003 identify the following dimensions of employee involvement and employee participation. And before I give you the that slide. I'm not going to discuss the slide in any great detail. I'm going to give you the slide and ask you to come back later, make notes from the slide, study the slide. It's, uh, it's areas that are considered in other videos on the course and you should therefore be familiar with. But I'd ask you to come back to the slide later and, and deal with it. So I'm just going to give you the slide. I'm not going to discuss in detail the contents of the slide. So that's from the original article. Uh, it's it's taken from the original article, the ideas and the concepts. And I'd ask you to go back and look at this in more detail. Make notes and try to understand what is a collectivist approach and what is the individualist in nature and what is a unitarist. And, uh, as I said, it's covered in other videos, so you should be able to, to deal with this. Uh, quite straightforwardly. So have a look at that later on when the video finishes. But remember the, the slide number, slide 18 out of 122. So you can easily find it on the video. Now the types of employee involvement techniques. Well there are different types of uh, employee involvement techniques an organization can consider. For example downward communication it could be upward, two-way communication. It can be uh, representative participation. And it can be empowerment or financial involvement. So there are different types of employee involvement techniques that an organization can consider. And we've just listed five here. Let's talk about this five, uh, these five points to see what's meant by them. First of all, let's consider downward. <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> excuse me. Let's consider uh, downward communications. 
Now this type of uh, employee involvement is based on downward communication, passing information from management down to the employees. So try to see the organization as a, almost like a, a pyramid with the management at the top and the employees ranged below the top management. There will be the very top management, different layers of management and then the employees and the employees layer underneath. And downward communication comes from the top. It flows down through the organization. It's aimed at providing information to employees to educate uh, or for informing purposes. So the, the flow of information from the top is to educate the, the workforce perhaps about the different requirements in the market or different technical processes that they need to take on board or some changes that are can can be flagged up because the, the management see that these changes will be needed in the future. So it's to, to let them people below know that this is what's going to happen. So it's informing them or it's educating them. Uh, it's an involvement technique as employees are informed about uh, the the current organization's decisions and progress. So it, it's in it's involving the the workforce. It's it's keeping the workforce informed about what's happening. It's coming from the top. It's what the top see as the issues. They see changes in the market. They see changes in tastes, new technologies, new developments, globalization, problems of cheap imports, whatever it is. They can see this and they pass the information down the uh, through the organization down through the employees. It's a common form of communication and well established. Involvement is in the form of instructions, job briefing, organization rules and policies. So the communications can come in all sorts of ways. It can be communications about uh, instructions for working practices, what needs to be done. It can inform the workers of about health and safety issues or about changes in the organization or changes in production processes or changing the rules of the organization. When does the organization start in the morning and when will it close in the evening? What are the policies of the organization? So it's communications from the top coming all the way through. So everyone within the organization knows what the senior management is thinking. It can be used to make announcements. Um, the management may announce some new product or some new development. It's going to open a new factory somewhere or it's going to uh, it's going to close a certain part of the existing plant or it's going to update something. It, it, it makes an announcement and again it's coming down. The information is coming down from above down to the employees. So the involvement techniques could include a team briefing where different teams are brought in and management present what they're thinking and uh, the team is briefed on what the management's thinking. That's coming from the top down. Could be uh, internal notice boards or some sort of publication within the company. It depends on the size of the company. but. An internal notice board. A notice goes up to say that in future the business will will not work on Saturdays, or in future the uh, certain machinery will be only turned on at certain times, or whatever the content is. And it's it's like an edict. It's put on the board, and that's the rule. So it's communications from the top down. It could be that they have in-house journals and reports aimed at employees. It could be the organization has a regular newsletter for all the employees, which is used as a way of putting out information and informing the employees of what the management is thinking. Some organizations may use videos and audio tapes. They may put it onto the, the web. But not all the employees may have access to the web or have interest in accessing the, the corporate website. So uh, 
It may not be a very effective way of doing it. It could be emails and telephone briefings. It depends critically on the nature of the business. Uh, <clears throat> overwhelmingly we tend to think of production based systems but in, in, a, in a modern society we have to recognize that a lot of businesses are service based and people communicate using email and telephone and uh, they, they use modern communications channels. They may not in fact be in a in a factory setting or in an office setting they may be working from home so it depends on the nature of the business in-house journals reports bulletins newspapers are aimed at communicating to employees those are probably the best ways of getting the information out it's it's published published as a newsletter or as a bulletin and disseminated amongst the, the workforce so they know what the management is thinking. There is a sense of involvement as employees are involved and informed about current news and events. So the employees are not shocked that there's a change taking place. They're, they're told in advance. They're involved. They are communicated with. Team briefings may occur on a on a regular basis and could be face to face management discusses uh, discusses um, current news strategies company goals information for employees to do their jobs and and so on so there could be face to face meetings between employees and management where management explain what their policies are what changes they're considering and and how the business is going to to change in the in the future. It could be uh, that they could have question and answers activities where employees uh, can send in questions to the management and the management will respond with an answer. Um, <coughs> it depends critically on the nature of the, of the questions of course and uh, and whether the management feel it's right to divulge all their information because after all competitors may also be interested in that information so some filtering of the questions would have to take place so as not to give away corporate secrets there's also upward communication we talked about downward coming from management down to the employees well it does go the other way from employees up to management. It's a two-way communication between management and employees. This type of involvement is for providing feedback and performance monitoring. Uh, it's good that the employees can feed information back up. Um, they can feed up information about the performance of machines or performance of techniques or of particular processes. Uh, they can flag up issues that will help the management refine its processes and become more competitive as a consequence, more cost efficient. Management and employees communicate with each other in order to gain better understanding of each other's needs. It's a two-way process. The, the employees contact management, management contact employees. It, it's up and down. It's a two-way process. Uh, but it means there's more understanding and better understanding between the two sides. And the employees feel valued as they are considered as a team. They're considered important. Their views are held to be important. The communications are taken seriously. They're not dismissed so it's it's a good form of communications the aim of two-way communications will provide feedback to employees on progress and uh, performance involve employees in problem-solving and decision-making activities provide management with an insight into employee needs and 
training opportunities. So you can see here from the list, by the way, that one and two are really uh, coming from management down to the employees, whereas three is going the other way, providing management with an insight into employee needs and training opportunities. Developing employee trust, uh, commitment and loyalty with the organisation. When, when employees feel they are listened to, when, when they feel important, they feel as a part of the team, their, their opinions are respected and considered seriously. There is more motivation and there is more interest in the organisation. There is a better working climate. So the communications channels are important. And it should come from the top down, but it should go from the bottom up also. The types of involvement techniques. Well, there could be works councils, for example. The, uh, the workers may, in, may group into a works council and elect uh, a representative to, to speak on their behalf. It, it is much more efficient if one person brings a list of suggestions or questions or issues to management than if they all come from different angles and from different people. Uh, it makes it much more efficient if, if the workers have an organisation and they subscribe to the organisation in terms of their commitment, their attendance and, and their support. And a single person, let's say, the chairman of the Works Council or so, some authorised person will then take the list to management and and try to get responses. Uh, the communications could be by management trying to interview the, the workforce or by having focus groups or by a questionnaire trying to find out what the workforce think and management could facilitate this by having let's say a focus group uh, randomly selecting five or six people and having a facilitator and asking the group to participate not not forcing them but asking them to participate and the facilitator trying to educe, trying to take out issues and and take out feelings about certain processes and policies and and try to work out what's the the workforce think about the way management is conducting itself. Could be through interviews, but interviews may be seen as somewhat intimidating. The the workforce may may be reticent in participating with interviews because they will feel exposed, they will feel marginalised and perhaps vulnerable and they won't exactly tell the truth. They will tell what the, the management perhaps wants to hear. Quality circles are well established where a group of perhaps 10 people meet once a week, let's say, in one of the offices and a uh, very informal setting, very relaxed setting. Um, they discuss issues about work, about the quality of the work and uh, gradually issues emerge from just general chat over let's say a one hour session over a session that uh, they spend in the office some issues might emerge and in the following week they can talk about the issues uh, more specifically and and so on until recommendations come out to fix these issues when in that way the organization is improved but the communications is coming from from the bottom. It's coming from the workers. And it's working its way right through the organisation up to management, up to senior management. And there could be intra-organisational groups. There can be groups from different sections. A group from the stores, a group from production, a group from dispatch, a group from accounts, a group from marketing, and so on and they can all have their inputs and it depends on how it's structured, it depends on the nature of of the organisation as well but it could be that they all have internal meetings and one person 
then meets with all the others and, and they all go to see the management and there's a, a more widespread and informed approach as a consequence. Suggestion schemes have been used for years in organizations. Uh, it can be done anonymously. Somebody may make a recommendation to make some change. It may be a very good idea or it may not be so good, but at least it was an idea and it should be encouraged. Now, the, the broad groups and work councils, as I talked about earlier, well, this type of involvement technique is based on problem solving through discussions and providing recommendations. So the works councils are excellent ideas to discuss issues, discuss safety issues and health and discuss hours of work and break times and uh, cooperation within the, the workforce. It, it can be used for a whole variety of purposes and it's widely used. Groups of employees, either management, senior management or work level, come together to form a council. It's as simple as that. Uh, the people on the shop floor get together uh, during the lunchtime and they elect someone. They discuss what they could use this work council for and they elect someone and then when they've got issues to bring it to that person and they may discuss it amongst themselves more and more and uh, when there's a, a strong feeling that management need to be consulted that person will go and see the management and explain the issue. So the aim of the work council is to discuss current issues relating to the business. All members are involving uh, involved I should say in resolving problems and finding solutions. It's from the grassroots upwards. Uh, all the, the members of the the workforce have met, they've discussed the issue, they, they go to the chairperson of the uh, the works council who is then authorized by them to go and see the management and discuss the issue again to get some change perhaps. So the recommendations are passed to the CEO or senior management for consideration and it should be taken very seriously by senior management. This is a recommendation coming from the shop floor and in many cases the people who are making these recommendations are experts. They're experts in the day-to-day -day running of the business. They see an issue, they discuss it. They should it should be taken seriously. Uh, it should be discussed over uh, with the, the individual representatives from the Works Council. It should be work discussed with experts from the business side. And if there is a need for change, then it should be implemented. And the Works Council should be credited with that change. Quality circles. Well, as I said, it's a, an involvement technique similar to uh, board groups or work council. Um, a group of employees come together to discuss ways to improve their workplace. Um, it could be improve the quality of the product. It could be to improve the quality of their work. Or it could be to improve conditions of work. So. It's, it's a very open forum, it's a, a free and easy environment. It more, uh, focuses on issues relating to the quality of the work and procedures. For example, manufacturing processes, product design and safety. But it could involve other issues. Um, the quality of the work could be conditional upon the, the quality of the raw materials that are given to the employees or the quality of the machinery or the safety of the machinery or the uh, the number of breaks the employees are allowed over over the day to to rest and regenerate and to have more enthusiasm there should be contact between the different employees as well and that should be facilitated so there's a, a better spirit in the in the workplace Entrusting employees with 
the responsibility for maintaining quality, making changes and adjustments, will motivate them to perform and work harder. So the employees feel valued. Their opinions are valued, so they feel valued. And in that way they they try harder to have better quality, to implement change and improve productivity. They are working with the management. Interorganizational groups, well, uh, groups uh, involvement techniques where groups of employees from different areas of the business meet to discuss and share ideas and experiences. As I said earlier, this can be right across the organization. There could be um, a group in marketing and they're just looking at issues in marketing. They're looking at uh, what could be made better, uh, how could th that particular section be improved. The HR department may have its own group looking at processes within HR. Um, it could be the distribution section have a little group looking at uh, what happens within distribution and how it can be improved and how working conditions can be improved, how motivation can be improved. Could be happen on the shop floor in, in, in terms of if it's an engineering plant, uh, the engineering section. So these different groups all have particular requirements and these could be aggregated, it could be a a sort of a like a plenary session where the individual members then meet and discuss the issues and bring it to management. The groups of employees can comprise of the same sector, for example employees working in the finance department in London, Manchester and Wales. They come together to discuss issues related to the company's finance issues. So the groups it depends on, on, on the nature of the business. The business may operate on different plants. For example, I've given here London, Manchester, Wales, Birmingham and so on. So the employees have something in common. They work for the same organisation, they're just working in different locations. So there should be some means of enabling them to discuss common issues. And bringing those to the attention of senior management to bring about a better business and perhaps making changes to the business model which will be to the advantage of the workforce, more stable employment, better prospects, perhaps a more profitable business and a better image in the marketplace, a more cooperative Im image in the marketplace. Another example, employees working in the same branch but different areas such as finance, marketing, HR and production meet to discuss and share best practice. Sometimes within organisations employees working in one section are separate from other sections. There's very little contact between them. It's like there's nothing in common when in fact they all work for the same organisation and they're all important. So inter-organisational groups facilitate this, enable uh, employees from different sections to meet and discuss common, common areas, common, common ground. This involvement technique is becoming increasingly common as employees take part in decision making and promote group work activities. So it is moving there is more contact between the various sections and there's more communications and organizations should facilitate that. It's in the interest of the organization to have better communications. It avoids misunderstandings, it avoids disputes, but also it can have positive impacts. Constructive proposals for change, for example. Use of attitude surveys. Well, um, attitude surveys are useful uh, because they indicate the, the, the depth of feelings that the, the workforce have for certain issues. It's not a precise science. Uh, it's 
it may be used it might be an indicator but it's not precise so attitude scaling for example techniques it may be that the employees are asked to complete an attitudinal survey regarding uh, working conditions well it depends on when the uh, survey is being conducted if it's being conducted just as the shift is about to finish and they're about to go home their interests are not with the company their interests have already left the company their, in their interests are already gone home so they they want to get the the questionnaire done as quickly as possible they're not thinking about the answers in any great detail they're not engaged uh, it could be that they're tired they just want to get it over and done with um, it may be they want to please the person who's administering the attitudinal survey they want to impress that person so lots of interference in the accuracy of attitudinal surveys this is dealt with in other areas and other modules that you will have encountered on the course it's very important that if attitudinal uh, surveys are used that these uh, drawbacks are explicitly recognized but employees are able to express their views and opinions about the organization the information received will help management to inform decisions about future the future of the organizations well depends on how much uh, weight the management place on the attitudinal surveys um, given the fact that it's not a precise science and given the fact that there are uh, they're influenced by noise in the system by distractions uh, they're not quite sure of the difference between one feeling and the next and the depth of their feelings it's it's a very complex procedure as I said there are separate videos on attitudinal surveys that you should have considered surveys will help management identify any areas of weakness and strengths within the organization having said mentioned the criticisms sometimes surveys can be used constructively they do indicate uh, perhaps depth of feelings and uh, ideas and, and what, the, what the employees are thinking uh, it depends on how they're conducted and how professionally they're done Questionnaires are a good source for collecting information. This form uh, of survey can be completed by post, in person, or online. Uh, it could be a questionnaire is... Uh, it depends on the design of the questions. If the questions are open-ended, it may be more difficult to work out precisely what the respondent is saying or, or what the point is. If it's a closed question, it's a yes, no, or maybe then that might be more constructive but there again the respondent has been forced into giving uh, a definitive answer when in fact what the respondent wants to do is to make a statement about what he or she feels not be forced into a definitive answer but the questionnaire should be anonymous so that employees can openly ins express their views they don't want to feel that they're going to be victimized or, or punished as a consequence of participating in the survey or certainly if they've said some uh, or mentioned some points which are negative towards management they don't want to feel that they're going to be punished as a consequence questionnaires offer instant responses and are a cost-effective means of collecting information and analyzing information as I said it depends on how the the questionnaires are constructed it depends on the length of the questionnaire how they're administered what pilot work has been done it depends on whether the questions are open-ended or closed-ended again all of this is the subject matter of other videos on other modules in the research module and you should be familiar with those by now interview and focus group well focus groups are 
interviews conducted by a group of people or employees. However, interviews are mainly conducted on a one-to-one -one basis. So focus groups, a number of people are brought into a room or invited into a room and uh, a facilitator is, uh, is put in place and the facilitator tries to get the focus group to discuss certain issues and make notes about their comments and their suggestions. Interviews tend to be more one-to-one. -one. Interviews are a good technique as they allow for more in-depth responses and are focused on a specific agenda. The trouble with the interview is that the interviewee may feel uh, feel like he or she has to give answers that will please the management. So they may not be telling the truth. And some of the responses may be vague. So there are problems with the interviews as well. They're very time consuming and they're very diff uh, expensive to administer. Uh, not straightforward. Suggestion schemes. Well, uh, suggestion schemes are another way of achieving uh, employee involvement. The employees become involved by making suggestions and sometimes if the suggestions are good and they can see changes that are coming about as a consequence of their suggestion they feel more engaged and, and happier, uh, more involved with the organisation. Organisations encourage suggestions from employees uh, as they can help the organisation progress. So it's in the interest of the organisation to try and get opinions and, and recommendations and suggestions from as wide a body as possible. Employees, management, junior management, uh, suppliers, anyone who will make suggestions, these suggestions should be considered. They could have suggestion boxes where employees post comments, anonymously for example, or offer suggestions to management, perhaps face to face. It depends on the confidence that the employee has. Sometimes employees are not very confident, they want to make almost secret suggestions. They want to put it into a suggestion box and make it anonymous. Sometimes they're quite open about what they want to see and they'll go and see the management and make suggestions face to face. Organisations encourage this scheme by offering rewards, incentives, money and prizes. If a suggestion comes up that is good, it's going to result in cost savings or uh, increased safety for the workforce or uh, better quality work. If it's a very constructive suggestion, it may be rewarded. There might be a, a financial reward given to the person who made the suggestion. Representative participation. Well, employees take part in decision making and involvement through their representatives and trade union associations. So, representative participation is when the employees are involved and they're involved through their representatives. They, they brief their representatives who, who see the management. They brief the trade union, perhaps, if it's a trade union that, that's involved. They brief them. Uh, as to what they want to see and in that way they become involved. Their opinions are taken to the management. It's a different level of involvement and independent from uh, the organisation's initiatives. The organisation's techniques are directed towards achieving organisational goals whereas employee recommendations and feedbacks through work council, chairperson or the trade union or this sort of feedback may involve everything from health and safety, hours of work, um, lighting, ventilation, uh, health and safety as I said uh, in, in, in all its formats right throughout the organization not just to the specific department in which the employee is engaged, um, the image of the, the business, the quality of the product, the pace of the, the work, uh, training. It can be on all sorts of issues. 
so going through that participation process through Works Council Trade Union can involve just about any of those areas. Um, with the organization techniques that are directed towards achieving organizational goals, that's the organization trying to engineer ways of achieving its objectives by facilitating employee welfare and employee requirements. But really it's doing so to try and achieve its organizational goals. Whereas the employees are trying to achieve goals that simply enable them to continue working, uh, working in a good environment, working safely with good remuneration and good terms and conditions. The different types of techniques could be joint consultative committee, advisory councils, work councils, uh, collective bargaining. So these are the different types of involvement techniques that could be included in representative participation. Employees associated with a, a representative have the right to engage in decision making that will affect their job or employment contracts. So employees uh, form into organizations, joint consultative committees or uh, works councils or whatever, and they should feel free to raise any issues associated with their employment contract, with the terms and conditions of employment, as well as the issues associated with uh, initiatives that can further the organizational goals, because the employee wants to do that as well. They want job security, they want uh, a prosperous business, because they want to continue to be able to earn a living. Representative participation, uh, this type of involvement is mainly concerned with trade unions and their members, ensuring employee rights have been followed within the workplace. So they have organizations, the, the work council, the perhaps the trade union. The trade union is a stronger form of uh, participation. And through the, the trade union, they're able to ensure that their rights their employment rights and their conditions of employment are appropriate. They're not being abused, they're not being uh, misused. They have got good conditions of employment and any departure from, from that they will alert the trade union who will negotiate with management. If uh, there's an issue between them that can't be resolved it could lead to a dispute. Empowerment. Well, entrusting a degree of responsibility and accountability to employees or work groups. This is when the management delegate some power to particular groups to do certain tasks, to undertake certain uh, functions. But of course, the group will then become responsible for the achievement of those tasks and are accountable for anything that goes wrong. This technique involves, uh, achieves an involvement, I should say, by handing over responsibility to the employees. The employees become more, more involved because they are trusted. And there is more responsibility given to the employees. But of course the employees have to honour that responsibility, have to live up to it. And as I said, they are accountable should something go wrong. Employees are given responsibility over certain tasks or projects. They are involved in decision making. So particular tasks within the organization may be in a sense delegated. So the, the workforce become empowered to con to process some some task or to deal with some task. And uh, it's their responsibility to ensure that it's delivered it's good quality, it meets the requirements. If they don't, they are accountable. They must explain why. Why the work is not good quality or if it was 
badly timed or there were issues it, it must account for its shortcomings the technique is very motivating as employees feel valued and have a sense of authority they're able to make choices and decisions so it does promote engagement it, it, it promotes motivation the workforce are being trusted they can do particular tasks and they feel happy that they're they're trusted to do those tasks certain factors must be taken into consideration for this technique however employees may not be willing to take on authority without extra pay just asking people to take on extra authority and extra responsibility responsibility normally is accompanied by extra remuneration they should receive extra pay for the extra responsibility they're taking on some employees may feel that they don't want the pressure or the stress caused by having more responsibility so they they don't want that type of involvement they don't want to be empowered they want to just do the tasks and go home they don't want to have responsibility they don't want to go home worrying about the job and whether they're they're doing the right thing or making the right decisions extra training may be required as some employees are do not have the relevant skills so it may involve extra resources on the part of the organization to ensure that the the teams that are recognized as suitable for empowerment those teams in fact have the right skills to enable them to uh, meet the tasks that's, that's required of them financial involvement well financial incentives are used as a method for engaging and involving employees companies often resort to uh, giving extra bonuses or extra remuneration to valued workers because they recognize their contribution individual performance for example may be linked to financial rewards the technique is motivating as employees will take part in involvement and engage in business activities so with regular performance appraisal management is able to gauge who is making a, a good contribution who's motivated who's involved who's who's interested and reward those people with extra payments employees uh, will be drawn will be driven I should say to succeed and work harder to achieve their financial rewards they, they feel more in, involved they feel recognized and they're rewarded uh, by management which of course may feed back into even greater uh, involvement on their part greater uh, efforts on their part to be even more constructive in the future so, so they're going to have continuous rewards financial incentives are performance related such as performance related pay extra pay depending on the performance and output of particular workers so workers may be observed as making extra contributions and doing that extra bit so they have performance related pay it could be profit related pay businesses give employees a share of profits usually calculated by the number of years worked and annual profits so sometimes the companies reward workers for their efforts um, when the accounts are worked out for the business uh, a sum is set aside for the workers which they receive as profit related pay it could be bonus schemes um, given a bonus for extra output um, extra performance or um, project completion so <coughs> the bonus schemes could be a recognition that 
some workers have put in extra effort and are simply given a bonus to compensate them and to recognize them and to reward them for that extra effort. It could be employee share ownership. Employees get free shares of the business or in the business at a fixed rate. Uh, this would involve the employees more directly with the business. There's now a blurring of the divide between workers and management because the workers are shareholders and perhaps the management are shareholders. They've both got a vested interest in the survival of the business. So both are incentivized to to make extra efforts and that's a way of getting more involvement. So what we've looked at in this session is employee involvement techniques. There are many of them and we've gone across various types. It's important to go back over the class, uh, identify each one, make a few notes about each one and what it means and what are its upsides and downsides, what are advantages and disadvantages, and go through each one and understand the different types of involvement techniques that may be used in modern business. But that's all we're going to deal with in this class, so we're going to leave it at that and say thank you for watching.